<laughs> Welcome to What the Flick, uh, episode three of the assassination of Johnny Versace on the FX. Mm -hmm. uh, Lonzo, Brett, Meredith, Ben. Uh, this is called a random killing. A random killing, um, uh, which is interesting because they they because their take on this, of which there are no details really known about the what relationship, if any, existed between Lee Bigelow and Andrew Cunanan in life. Uh, their take here on FX is that it was not a random killing. Right. Um, the title the, is <laughs> ironic. Uh, <laughs> right, but I mean, but but except. Except that's again their take, and even in their defense of it, they're saying it's our best guess. We really sure, know. Of course. So I mean, the irony that it's not—it's not really ironic because you don't—you don't know. <laughs> like it's your—it is a guess. Yeah, I mean, I again, this this series is 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 I don't know what to make of it because it's like all right, fine. If we're we're gonna stray from Versace and like not having been in this episode at all because it's really about Kunan and. I don't feel like this episode is really about Kunanan either, because it's mainly about this victim of his and what, like you said, what relationship that they're making up that they had. I don't feel like I'm learning anything about Kunanan as a character, apart from like he's so gay and so full of murder. You know? <laughs> and and I, I, there's just this is starting to feel like they're creating this kind of queer boogeyman character, and I want to have some idea of who this guy is. And if you don't know, then don't tell me the story. And I would argue this episode was even more about Marilyn than anyone else. I mean, that you know, we see a little bit of Lee. Yeah, she, she but, definitely but really, gets the bulk I feel of like it. she she really took center stage. Though I will say, uh, Darren, Chris, as I've never hated someone so much as I hate Andrew Cunanan. Like <laughs> I, I don't know this guy. He's I'm glad he's dead because Darren, Chris is doing such a fantastic job of make me thinking that this guy is absolutely disgusting and terrible. Um, because that scene in the the murder scene was mm. just. It was just brutal, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the reality of it's even worse. Yeah, yeah. I, I really liked this episode. Okay, and I liked this episode because it seemed like because you thought Lee Miglin had it coming. Is that yeah, right? he deserved it. Yeah. I mean, it's seldom does someone deserve it so right, much right, as like right, a guy yeah. who's lost right. and just trying to be loved in right. the world and be who he is. Like right. I hate that. Yeah, I hate How that. dare he? Um, yeah. But it did seem like when in doubt, they just made a really awesome like SVU episode. Right. <laughs> like it is better than any yeah. SVU episode yeah. I've ever seen mm -hmm. from a filmmaking perspective and a storytelling perspective. Like that. Cold open alone was so fantastic. They made a lot of um, decisions that were smart, but they didn't hit you over the head with them. That faint scream in the background and the and the sense of knowing, and then the storytelling that they the way they chose to tell, tell the story to go back and forward in time in a way that could have been confusing but wasn't. I thought it was really great. And and and, and, and to conclude that the way they the way that scene was delivered to us, the way it was directed to happen just before they go to commercial break to have Marilyn say. Mm -hmm. I knew it, which yeah. is which is also like, knew what, right? Yeah, right. right. What are we, what, what, what are we what, talking what, about? What, here? Are you, what are you acknowledging? And they that you play knew, right? so well with that thought, yeah, that right, question right, in the right, viewer's yeah. mind. They do such an amazing job of of, of posing Angela with from Who's the Boss as this person who is so smart and has it so together and is so aware of how to present things and 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 works in the world mm -hmm. of of mm -hmm. shop for on your television, whatever QVC, and and have her kind of. I just want to ask the question. She's giving us so much, but so little at the same time. It's great. I, I have to say that the, the casting of Judith Light, and I love that you bring up who's the <laughs> boss. I I could not get Shelley Pfefferman out of my head, like her character mm. on uh, on Transparent, mm. and uh, yeah. they're very similar in terms of like they talk a little too much. They they are always trying to be in charge of the situation. They're always going to tell you all the things you need to know, whether you ask or not. They're kind of irritating, but you kind of love them anyway. And I, there was a part where I, I just kind of felt like, which show am I watching? Watching here, like I, I just, she was just giving me such well, solidly yeah. Shelly Pfefferman. I, I, I wasn't Did, getting into this real woman that she was also playing. Here. Yeah, you want to know was casting like, well, it's obvious who we're going with, or yeah. like, yeah. is this I, too on the nose? Right, <laughs> right, if we don't have Judith Light, I'm just going to rewrite it and yeah. minimize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I wrote this, this right. Yeah. So go back and watch even some of the recent of um, of Marilyn uh, hosting on HSN. Uh, it's it's very. It's very good. She it's, nails it. Once again, <laughs> once again the, the casting in the show is fantastic because I feel like you know we've got Donatella who's so, so perfect, and now Marilyn Miglin, who I'm just like, oh yeah, it's her. I, I buy it. No, but I, I do agree with you. Like Kunanen is terrifying and mm -hmm. loathsome, and you yeah you 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 long yeah. to see him so be killed on this show but, or be found dead or whatever. But but who is he and why and what? Yeah. And, and if we're gonna get there, great. But in the meantime, I just feel like he is. 
kind of a two-dimensional I, I, building. I, I'd be surprised if we didn't get there. If we, I will say this, you can, and, and so if, if they don't get there, it, that will be very disappointing. Mm. But yeah. I imagine they are, and we're not getting nothing about him. I mean, we are, you know, we are getting that. I guess what would be obvious, but I mean that there is significant rage. There is. There is, you know, a ma massive psychological issues that were almost certainly never dealt with, and so yeah, we need those questions answered. But I thought, sort of, you know, even little things like seeing him get the, if that's true, the part about the cops mm -hmm. releasing the, you know, finding out about the cell phone thing and then tearing it out of the car, that sort of mania. Well, yeah, the, the procedural stuff they're definitely yeah, getting. It's, it's like right. it's how he, the manhunt and how he eluded. The, but even him, know. I'm saying the parts about him, and so I, I, you know, you. you you're not getting answers, but you are learning something about and it. And I've seen the rage scenes with Andrew Cunanan in them. I've seen his crippling whatever psychosis that he's that he's suffering from or has. Um, this was an episode that I thought was refreshing because it simply focused on the effect of this individual on someone's lives, mm -hmm. on the victim's lives, and and that was refreshing because there's I think the people who are making the show and myself there's only so much of the like I'm acting so well scene that I can take. <laughs> Here's what I would have liked, though, and and maybe you know I'm, I'm I'm judging on what it is instead of what it is. I would have liked one scene of him and Lee Miglin earlier to get an idea of what their what their just even their yeah. their sort of yeah. hustler John relationship was like. So like you know how far did it go in terms of the you know the bondage or the humiliation or whatever versus how far it went this last time. I think we have to you know we we saw mm. they they did that with Versace and again that's all contextual. We still don't know. So at some point are we going to just make this purely fiction or is it like ninety percent based on this book or like what is what is real and what isn't? So I can understand their hesitancy to do that because where it stands. We still don't know much about Andrew Kanan and, and his motivations. Like that's the biggest question. And I don't I'm curious to see if this series aims to answer that for us as an entertainment purpose or if they also have spoken to other people outside of the original author of the book that they're basing this on. I, I think I would have liked what what a lot because because we because that you know when he starts talking to him about the sky tower mm -hmm. or is it the sky needle? Mm -hmm. Sky yeah. needle. Yeah. Space needle. <laughs> sky needle. Sky needle, thank you. <laughs> um uh that uh, um like if it's just a hustler John relationship, that is a peculiar conversation right. to lead him in, yeah. right? And so I was try. So obviously we know because the way he called. Obviously they had some relationship before. I think in this case I would have dug a two minute scene of of what had happened earlier because then when he's wrapping him up, are we like? Wow, I guess so. At what point does he that, realize this is further than before? Or, you know? or, or he's super willing to go along with this. So I guess they did this before. Have they met just once? I mean, have they met six times? Yeah, unless the, unless the implication is like he wraps everybody's head in yeah. duct tape, you know. And that guy we saw in Miami mm -hmm. last week is just indicative of what he always did. And, and, no, one, and maybe, no one, no man, woman, yeah. nobody gets to wrap me in duct tape like that. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I wouldn't even think of that as yeah. an option. Not right. on the menu. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I think you know yeah. we did see last week's episode to kind of give us that at least Kanan has a history list, but also too to get into um, Midland and Kanan's relationship, you, we kind of get a bit of that where they talk about you know, oh, I you want me to be a husband, I could be. Your husband, I could be your partner, and I think that there, you know, we're, we see how Cunanan acts, especially in regards to the whole uh, sky needle thing. He's like, "Why are you? You're just, you know, you're basically some loser. You're not going to ever achieve this." That, you know, Cunanan seems like he's very angry that he only wants to be with real, not just dreamers, but people who actually like are accomplished, accomplished like Versace. So you see that rage and that anger because that's all that Cunanan's ever wanted is he wants to be somebody, not just somebody by association. And I think in that that few minute dialogue of them with the the sky needle we kind of get that sense of what their relationship was that for Miglin he wanted something more he wanted this to be real and he even says to him just pretend pretend can't you just pretend for once right and 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 that in their version of that conversation that that he was insistent, like, what do you mean, Sky Needle? Mm -hmm. Like, it's the Lee Miglin, Miglin Tower. Tower. Yeah. Like, otherwise, what am I doing here with mm -hmm. the random no name who did <laughs> Sky Needle? Right, I gotta be, I gotta be with the man who did Lee Miglin Tower. Or is it like you're lying to me about calling it the Sky Needle? That's when you what said, I. That's mm -hmm. kind of what I got. No, I like, took it as I took it yeah. as as I need to feed off your fame. And mm -hmm. I think we're gonna get more of exactly why. Andrew Cunanan does what he does, or that there is no rhyme or reason. It's whatever comes across his mind at the time. He wants to take these people down. He'll find anything wrong with them. Like glom onto that as the ultimate reason why he 
goes through with killing someone. And we'll get the, we'll get the first two murders next week, or at least yeah. in the next yeah. couple weeks. I like weeks, that they yeah. went with this murder. Because I wasn't expected. I thought they'd go back to you know back to one and just go. Yeah. Through well, and, and I guess we got no, two. Sorry. Oh, because we also got the park, uh, the right. mortuary, or oh right, yeah. you're the guy who's yeah. trucky yeah. seals, yeah. But and and you know you could make the case that oh well we don't really understand OJ any better than we did mm -hmm. you know before seeing that American crime story. But that one gave us you know Marsha Clark and gave us the other players in that you know in in the whole thing you know the 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 different the attorneys on both sides and. And the sort of broader spectacle of that trial, and this one doesn't have that kind of character to pin it on. So we're left with Versace and Cunanan and this book that is reputed to be garbage. So, like, I don't know what that right. is. That right? Is that right? Uh, there are a lot of people who say there's there's a lot of fictionalization because well, we, we, we don't know. I mean, that's the frustrating thing about you know with OJ. Yeah, we didn't get full, but 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 that's a crime. That everybody gets because it's 85% of murders, right? right? My wife, she won't come back to me, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make her pay for not coming back to me, and this other guy's there too. I mean, it's it's horrible, but it is not beyond our capability of understanding. Where Kunanans, we don't quite know. It's not. I mean, obviously, he had no. I suppose he had to, in his way of thinking, had to kill the the cemetery caretaker, mm -hmm. but he could have tied him up and gotten away. I mean, that when when the guys once they discover the body, they're gonna discover that it's Cars missing anyway, so killing him. Right. Nothing really gets. You, nothing really buys you significantly right. more time. They are right. searching for yeah. Andrew Kunan. Right, right, yeah. right. And I think right. I think the the killing of the cemetery worker is why when we start at some point they it wasn't just murders. It was a serial killing, and so Kunan gets off. Right. On the aspect of killing, he could let people live, but he doesn't. Because yeah, he's not gaining actual, anything. He just yeah. wants to do it. Right, he thought he'd killed three, and now mm -hmm. killed four. Right? And yeah. it was that moment. It was. It, it looked like he hadn't really made up his mind until the guy started mm -hmm. talking about how he wanted to see his kids. Right. It's just I'm done with this. Yeah. This right. is the time to kill. Right. And right. he didn't feel like you know when he pulled his gun on um, mm -hmm. on you know the the main murder at this in this episode, he he doesn't go through with it because there's still something more interesting to happen. Yeah. yeah. You know. He puts his gun away, um, and I guess part, partly, clearly, where we're headed. They've hinted at it, didn't hint at it. They've set it up in the mm -hmm. first two episodes. Is this this idea that you know, again, if this guy hadn't been perceived to be killing gay men, right? Mm -hmm. If this weren't, if this didn't have the stigma of oh, the gay killer, could he possibly have gone down to Florida while they're searching for Andrew Cunanan and they know the car that he has for crying out loud, yeah. right? I mean, they're looking for the caretaker's pickup truck, caretaker murdered in New York. Uh, would 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 this have been a different scenario? Could a could a guy who had killed four non gape even though the caretaker wasn't? But I mean, right. could they possibly have? Have let that guy live for two months and not tracked him down. I'm reminded of a line from HBO's adaptation of "And the Band Played On," where one of the reporters who's trying to talk about the, the AIDS when it's still relatively new, and an editor says, "Nobody wants to read about gay men dying except for gay men and the people who wish they'd all die." Oh wow! Uh, and so this is about a decade later, but right. yeah, I right. suspect yeah. that probably does play a, a role in that. Yeah, that it just wasn't. Mm -hmm. However, things get prioritized yeah. there at the FBI. Was the flyers stay in the trunk? Right, <laughs> and the, right, and good FBI agents are you know, up fighting or up against mm -hmm. it. Right. All right, uh, but I, I mean, I thought I, compelling, hard to watch. You know, I mean, I, I, I and and reading about Lee Miglin's murder is worse than, than yeah. the details yeah. are particularly awful. But still, it was incredibly difficult to to watch that scene, mm -hmm. which means it was effective. Yeah, no question. All right, uh, we will uh, be back uh, next week with episode four of the uh, assassination of Johnny Versace. <laughs>